Hey guys, it's Becky. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Discovery Cove in Orlando, Florida. If you guys have followed me on my channel for any length of time, you know that we typically go to Florida every year, um, usually go to Disney World, and then this year we went to Discovery Cove for one day, which is a departure for us because typically when we go to Disney World, we go there and hit the parks every single day, but I deliberately and specifically wanted to make sure we went to Discovery Cove because I feel like both girls are old enough. Um, we talked about going to Discovery Cove a couple years ago when our old, our youngest daughter was, was smaller and I felt like she just might be a little overwhelmed by the water and the dolphins and all that stuff. But now that she's 12, my oldest is 18, I felt like it was the perfect time to go. Um, and so we did. And so I thought I would share this video with you guys because it's not cheap. Um, it, you know, most things aren't and it's definitely not cheap. Um, but I thought I would share our experience with you because um, I did a lot of research before we left of like what they have to offer. And I feel like there's people that do vlogs about that, that if you want to see like actual full length footage of the different things they offer experience wise, there's definitely other videos for that. This is just kind of, I'll, I'll put some videos over of like some of the stuff we did. But I wanted to share with you kind of the main question that I know I had when I was planning our trip was, is it worth it? It is not cheap um, for the four of us to go for one day, it was almost $1,400. Now we did have a coupon and we did a couple extras. So that was not just the, you know, the main admission price. We did have some add-ons, which I'll talk about in a second. But for that $1,400 with the coupon, that did include admission to the park. We also did the dolphin swim for four people and we also rented a private cabana and did the photo package. So at the time of filming, it's about $100 more per person to add the dolphin experience on. So that in, in alone in itself was $400 to add that on. Um, but your admission does include, um, like there are add-on experiences, but it does include a lot of experiences that are for anybody that has general admission. You also get all of your meals covered. Um, and they do have uh, drinks as well, some alcoholic beverages as well. We don't drink, so I have no clue which ones were free and which ones weren't. Um, but I do know that was an option that they offered, included with your admission. Also, free towels to use while you're there, wetsuits, sunscreen, life jackets, pool noodles, pretty much anything you would need to be in the water they had. And I was particularly impressed with... Um, they even had the snorkel gear that you needed to go into the Grand Reef where you can like swim with stingrays and stuff like that. They even had snorkel gear that was free um, and even sun, um, prescription snorkel like goggles, which I thought was really neat because my husband and I and my oldest daughter actually, we all have glasses and I wasn't quite sure how that was gonna work out. I mean, I can see without my glasses or contacts in, but you know, things are a little blurry and then you go underwater, they're a little bit more blurry. so. I thought it was really neat and something I didn't know to expect when we got there that they do offer prescription snorkel goggles if you need them. So all of that stuff is included with your general admission. They do have other experiences like the dolphin experience that's extra. They have um, kind of a scuba diving experience that's extra. So you definitely need to check the website and see what's available that comes with your admission and what is an add-on. For us, the main draw was to go and swim with the dolphins and so that did cost us extra. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we had a shady place to go, so that's why I went ahead and did the private cabana. But, and it was actually um, a better deal to get the private cabana with the photo package. That way, when we went to swim with the dolphins, we already had our pictures, you know, taken, and that was included in our package price. So, for me, that was another draw of doing the private cabana. Plus, you have your own cabana attendant that will bring you fresh towels. They have snacks and a refrigerator in your cabana, a locker so you can put all your stuff. And then there's also lockers that are free um, in different areas of the resort. But when you have a private cabana, you have your own private locker. There was chairs. It was just really, really nice. Um, so if it's in your budget, I highly recommend renting a private cabana. So the times of year and the days that you go definitely affect the rate that you're paying for admission. Um, so make sure that you sign up for their emails and maybe follow them on social media because I know they do sales and discounts and coupons all throughout the year. Like I said, we had a coupon. I know they do, usually do one around Black Friday. Um, so make sure that you are signed up for all of their notification things so that you can get um, discounts. And also I think they have discounts for Florida residents. Um, one thing that somebody did suggest to me when I talked about going to Discovery Co. before we went, somebody suggested that we should bring water shoes. and. I didn't think about that. I mean, they did say that and I was kind of like, well, 
I don't know that we'll really need those. And I got distracted by other things trying to get ready to go and we did not get water shoes. We were there a very short amount of time before we realized that we do need water shoes because the lazy river in particular is very bumpy. There's like rocks and stuff on them and you will scra scab up your knee your feet and your knees um so we ended up having to pay like 120 dollars to get four pairs of water shoes where if i had just been smart and proactive and gotten them on amazon before we left they're like 10 or 12 dollars a piece so that was an expensive mistake but now we have them and i don't know if we'll ever use them again but we do have them so highly recommend water shoes uh even if you don't think you will need them i pretty much guarantee you that you will need them so that's kind of the nitty gritty, the price that we paid, kind of what's included, the different options that you have and some suggestions that I have for you when it comes to planning a trip there. Now I just wanna talk about the overall experience. So the first thing is um, every single employee that we had any inter interaction with was nice. And I wish I could say the same thing about Disney. Um, and I'm sure there were some people there that weren't nice, but I mean, we had quite a few interactions with different people, people walking around the resort, the person that took us to our cabana, the people that signed us in the guy that got us our snorkel, snorkel gear, the lady that gave us our prescription snorkel goggles, the guy that was like, took us, I mean, everybody we talked to was super nice and helpful and friendly. And as much as I love Disney, um, over the last, well, over my lifetime, I guess, of going to Disney since I was like nine, the cast member experience, I think, has gone downhill a lot. You do still have those cast members that are super nice, that seem to love their job, they're excited to be there, they're really helpful and fun and friendly. But unfortunately, I think in our experience in the last 15 or 20 years, um, that's not been the case. It's actually the, the exception more than it is the rule to find those people. Whereas at Discovery Cove, when we went, everybody was super nice. And like I said earlier, the food is included. It's an all-inclusive resort. So you have breakfast, lunch. I mean, you could, I guess, count it as dinner, but I think the restaurant closes at three. So you'd have to eat pretty early to consider that dinner. But you can go back as much as you want. And there's also snack stands set up around the resort with chips and pretzels and cookies and drinks and smoothies and frozen lemonades and things like that. So you're definitely able to get as much food as you want for free. And then, like I said, those alcoholic things, I don't really know much about. You'd have to ask or do your research about that because we don't drink. Um, they were unlimited and they did have a wide variety. It wasn't great food, uh, I will say, but you know, I mean, it was pretty average, I think for a theme park and considering it was included in the price, it was nice to not have to pay extra. So that way when I go there, I know that except for buying water shoes, everything that we need for that day is included. I'm not having to spend anything extra. There was also lots of tables that were available to eat at and they were usually in shady areas and or had umbrellas. So it was just really nice. Of course, we went in May. The weather was really nice. We had lunch under this really pretty like palm area and then we had an umbrella over our table as well, but it was just really nice. Um, so I think overall the experience with the food, even though the food itself wasn't that great, was an overall good experience. The one thing I will say about Discovery Cove, and I don't know, I didn't check the hours for the entire year when we went, like I said, it was May, and they're only open nine to five. So you'll wanna check the website to see if that's different when you plan on going. Um, but if they open at nine, they recommend you get there at 7.15 to check in. So that was a little bit difficult because you know we had been going to the parks every day leading up to our trip and so we were kind of getting tired and then having to get up in the morning and get there by 7 15 was a little bit difficult so you'll want to make sure that if you're doing something the day before try to get in bed at a decent time so that you're able to get up and enjoy the day and not be grumpy um, for coffee drinkers if you need that you know boost of coffee in the morning they did offer free coffee as well i don't drink coffee so i don't really know if it was any good but it's free, it's there, and it might help to wake you up since you are having to get there pretty early. Um, so they have a, a variety of animals all throughout the resort. Even if you don't do the dolphin experience, they have stingrays, they have all different types of tropical fish, they have flamingos, they have an aviary that you can go to and feed the birds, they have monkeys. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, in the Grand Reef, you can snorkel with the stingrays, all the different types of fish, they have shark rays. I was actually pretty surprised that you're allowed to get in the water with these animals, I mean, how do they know you're not gonna like hurt them or give them something to eat or I don't know. But I mean, it was just really neat to do that. And even though I didn't do the snorkel part, like I didn't put my face in, I did get in the water and there's just stingrays that just swim right past you and shark rays that just swim right past you. And I'm like, that's pretty neat. So that was a really nice experience. If you do plan to do the dolphin experience like we did, 
they will make you take off all of your jewelry. Anything with stones, anything that dangles. So you'll want to make sure that you either don't bring that stuff with you or you leave it in a locker. We didn't know that. So we had to put all of our jewelry in a locker, which is a little concerning. Um, so just make sure that if you are planning on doing that, you may want to just like leave that in your hotel or wherever, you know, you're staying. So you don't have to even worry about that when you're there. The dolphin experience was really fun. Um, we had done, when we went to SeaWorld a few years ago, we did a dolphin experience there and it was like there in the water and you're standing next to the water. And that was really fun. But I think that was really the catalyst to us wanting to do an actual dolphin experience. I've always wanted to swim with the dolphins, even though I'm afraid of water and I don't swim. Um, I have always wanted to do that. I love dolphins. They're one of my favorite animals. So, for us that like i said that was the main draw to discovery cove and was that worth it yes i think it was um you know you're in the water about 30 35 minutes you're not necessarily interacting with the dolphin all of that time sometimes the trainer is telling you a little bit about the dolphin that you're with or dolphins in general um, and then you have an opportunity to you know touch it kind of hug it and then at the end of our session our dolphin kind of pulled us a little bit so that was fun um, so, I mean, you know, you're not in there a huge amount of time. You're not completely hands-on all of the time, but I still think it was a really neat experience. And when we bought the private cabana and the photo package, it came with a buoy that they put your, you know, whatever you want to have put on there. So, you know, we put our family name in the year, but I mean, you could do like a proposal or a graduation, you know, ceremony, like celebration or whatever they'll write on it. And then the dolphin will actually bring it to you. And so our dolphin, we were the only one in our group that had that package. And so they gave the dolphin the buoy kind of off away a little bit. And then she, um, carried it over in her mouth and gave it to her youngest daughter. And then we did a family picture with it. So yeah, I don't know where I'm going to put that. I mean, where do you put a big giant buoy once you get back home? I don't know, but I've got to keep it because it's a fun memory and it was a great time. So overall, is Discovery Cove worth it? I think it's like any theme park. They're never really probably worth what you pay for them, but they're fun. It's a fun experience. I think Discovery Cove is particularly unique, especially if you like the water, especially if you like lazy rivers, you can just endlessly go through. Um, you know, if you like things that are all inclusive and you want to swim with dolphins and you want to see these tropical fish and everything up close, I definitely think it's worth it. It was such a fun experience. It's kind of a combination between a water park and an aquarium which I think is fun. Um, and I hate water. Like I said, I hate water. I don't swim. I am super fair. So I burn, I, you know, but I had to be able to get over that a little bit to be able to do what I wanted. And the hardest part for me was the lazy river because I don't swim. There are certain areas of the lazy river that are, I can't touch the bottom of. And so if you can't swim or you have kids that can't swim, you know, you just kind of want to know going into it that there are certain areas that you can step, you know, you can reach the ground. There's other areas where you can't, uh, but that's why it's nice. They do offer life jackets and pool noodles. So me and my youngest both did that because neither one of us can swim very well. Um, so that was a little scary for me because I have not been in any type of pool that I could not touch the bottom of since I was a tiny child. So for me, that was hard, um, but it was still fun. And of course my husband and the girls loved it. They don't care, but not to be able to touch the bottom of the pool or whatever. So that was really fun. The only thing I will say negatively, I mean, it is expensive, but the only real negative I will say about it was there was a part in the lazy river where there's a waterfall you have to go through. Well, we thought you had to go through. It turns out you can actually get out at one certain area and walk around and then come out on the other side of the waterfall because there's two waterfalls that are very aggressive waterfalls. I was really surprised at how hard the water comes down. And for somebody like me who's afraid of water and can't swim, or maybe a small child that doesn't want to get like pushed in their head with water, I personally felt like the waterfall was a little bit aggressive. So the first time we went through the lazy river, we did not know that there was a, a bypass. So we had to go through it. And I'm like, people are tugboating me, my husband and my daughter are like pulling me through and I'm holding my breath and I'm closing my eyes. I can't see where I'm going because I don't know, you know, I'm just trying to get through this stupid waterfall. And then the second time around, we asked the lifeguard, which there are lifeguards all scattered all throughout the park. We were like, can we, do we have to go through the waterfall? And they were like, no, you just get out right here and go around. So now that we know that it's a great option, keep that in mind. If you do think maybe you don't want to get squirted in the head with some aggressive water, um, you know, it's not going to like knock you under necessarily, but it's still pretty stout. And I did not like that part. That's my only negative about it. So would we go back? I personally wouldn't go back and it's not because they did anything wrong. It's not because we didn't have a good time, but for me, 
it's one of those things that once I've done it, I don't need to do it again. Um, you know, the lazy river was fun. The snorkeling thing, you know, that part wasn't that fun for me because I didn't snorkel, so I can't really say, but my husband and the girls loved it. They definitely, all three of them said they would go back. I personally would not go back because to me, the biggest draw was swimming with the dolphins, which I did, and I don't really feel the need to do that again. Um, but like I said, it really honestly has nothing to do with no, no negative on the, the place itself because it was super fun. It's a beautiful resort. The people were nice. You know, all those good things. It's just one of those things that for me, once I've done it, I don't need, I don't feel the need to do it again. You would just have to decide for yourself. Is it something that you would only want to do one time and then you're satisfied or would you like to go back repeatedly? It looked like the people that were there, some of the people probably had season passes because they weren't doing any of the water stuff. They were just laying out on the man-made beach in the beach chairs. So, I mean, if that's your thing and you just want to go somewhere nice to lay out or you want to see tropical fish and birds and stuff like that and just kind of hang out, then, you know, if you like that thing, that type of thing, then you probably would like it, even if you just went and laid out on the beach, you know, but again, super white, so that's not my thing. Um, but it was really fun. I'm so glad that we did it. And I just think it was a great time. So it was expensive. I'm not going to lie. It was very expensive. I think for not even a full day, you know, nine to five, that's not even a full day. Um, but we had a really great time overall. It was some fun family memories and we have some great pictures and, um, I just think it was fun. So if it's in your budget at all, I definitely think it's something you should do at least once to see how you like it. And like I said, you don't have to do the upgrades like we did. You don't have to do the dolphin swim. You don't have to have a private cabana or the photo package, and then it would be cheaper. So um, definitely play around on their website with um, peak times versus non-peak times because there is a price difference there. Play around with adding on different packages that maybe you're interested in doing the scuba thing. Maybe you're interested in the dolphin swim like we did. You know, play around with it to see if something, you know, if there's something that fits in your budget. But I definitely think it's fun. Um, and a great experience that I'm glad that we did. I hope that was helpful and gave you a good perspective of the park overall and also the perspective of somebody who doesn't like water at a water park, essentially. So I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I mean, I do talk, talk about travel things here and there, Disney things here and there, but for the most part, I talk a lot about mom life, vlogs, um, mental health, physical health, organizing, cleaning, routines, homeschooling, all of that stuff on my channel. So if you like that type of content, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos that I post and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.